Hi everyone, welcome to week 6 of Introduction to Causal Inference. In this week we'll be talking about estimation. If you have any questions or comments that pop up in your head as we go through this lecture, then as usual, go ahead and drop those in the YouTube comments down below and I'll reply to those as soon as I can. We'll start with recalling the identification estimation flowchart, where we start with some causal estimand, some causal quantity of interest that we're interested in estimating, and then we identify that quantity by turning it into a statistical estimand. That's a quantity that doesn't have any potential outcomes or do operators in it. And this is what we've been focusing on for the last few weeks, with the exception of specific examples where we actually did estimate causal effects. Now, in this week, we'll be focusing on the estimation portion of this flowchart. So that's where we take some statistical estimand and then turn it into an estimate, an actual number that we'll use to report our causal effect. We'll start with some preliminaries, the first of which is conditional average treatment effects. The conditional average treatment effect is just like the regular average treatment effect, but now we're conditioning on x here. And we denote this with tau x, where this is the value of x that we're conditioning big X to be equal to. And throughout this lecture, we're always going to be assuming unconfoundedness and positivity. So we have identification. Identification is out of the way. And in order to do that, we just make these assumptions. More specifically, we have that the average treatment effect, which we'll denote with tau, is equal to this usual statistical estimate on the right here, where w is a sufficient adjustment set. And tau x, the CATE, the conditional average treatment effect, is equal to the same thing, but where we're conditioning on x. So still having w as the thing that we're marginalizing over. But now w isn't the only thing that's conditioned on. So w is not the only thing in our adjustment set. We also have x in the adjustment set because we're conditioning on x here. And the x in conditional average treatment effects does not need to be all observed covariates, though it often is. People often be talking about x being all the covariates that they've observed so that their conditional average treatment effects are as individualized as possible. In the course book, we actually call those individualized average treatment effects, so that that's a specific kind of conditional average treatment effect. With the preliminaries out of the way, we come to the lecture outline. In this lecture, we'll see a variety of different methods for estimation. We'll start with what I call conditional outcome modeling. This is the kind of estimation that we used in the examples that we saw in lecture 2 and lecture 4. So hopefully it'll look reasonably familiar. Then we'll move on to methods that will hopefully be a bit more data efficient than the conditional outcome modeling methods we'll see. Next, we'll see propensity scores and inverse probability weighting for estimation. And finally, I'll mention some other methods for estimation that are a bit outside the scope of an introduction to causal inference, but I'll give you a few details about them so you get an idea for what's kind of going on. And I have pointers to learn more about these in the course book.